G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Metal Cut Signs and Designs, and welcome to part two of our video series on how to build a CNC plasma cutting table. And just a brief recap of um, the first video where we talked about the components we need to build one. We needed uh, a plasma cutter, and uh, we're using the Unimig Razor Cut 45. We also need the CNC parts to drive the torch around, and the previous video we discussed the various components for the CNC table. There's the, um, the control module, which we're using the MyPlasm CNC controller. Um, there's the stepper motor drivers. There's the stepper motors themselves, the power supplies that run the various uh, motors. And you've also got your torch height controller and your ohmic sensor. So what I've done in this video is I've actually assembled all the components from the electronics perspective on the bench here, wired everything in, and we're going to go to the laptop and open up the software and, and have a brief look at what the speeds are for the various motors, and then we're actually going to manually drive these motors. And, and um, I'll just bring the camera around now, and we'll, we'll just open up the software and show you. Now, I apologise for this. I, I think the camera is going to see the... Um, a bit of shake in the, the screen fluctuation. Okay, so we open up the MyPlasm software. Uh, yes, that's what I want to do. Okay, now this is the application on my laptop. So what it does first is you go up and check the communications and as you can see it's communicating okay. So this, is, this diagram is just a, um, a flange that is actually one of the preset templates that's already inside the, the software. And yeah, again, I apologize for the, for the flickering screen. I'm not sure how I can else record this. Okay, so the first thing I can do is these keys over here are representative of where the torch lives in terms of movement. So if I use any of these keys, I can move the torch, either it's x-axis, y-axis, or it's z-axis. So if I use, or I can use the keyboard options, which is the up-down arrows, uh, left and right arrows, and the page up, page down for the z. So if I just give that a, you can hear that motor turning. That's actually the y-axis. And if I just move this over here while I'm doing that, what you can see is these are the two y motors. So they're moving in response to me pushing that button. And if I come back over here, if I was to go over here to the X and push that one or push this one, what you're seeing here is the X axis, and this is the motor driver here. This is the X motor, stepper, stepper motor driver, and this is the X motor. And if I was to give that a you can see that turning. So that's the principle behind that working. And just come back here again and I'll show you uh, the torch. These green arrows up and down is the torch. And you can see that represented by the z-axis number moving up and down. And the z-axis is this unit. This is a complete uh, unit that I bought pre-built. So it's already got the, the motor on it. It has this plate that drives up and down from this ball screw. And if I hold that there and operate page up, page down button, or the arrows on the screen, you can see that moving up and down. Okay, so if I was to tell this software here that I actually want to cut this path out, what I need to do is center the torch, so the torch is now down here as a reference, and if I go to the start button, what you'll see happen is the torch will go to each of these individual holes and it will cut them out. Now that's a hole, so you actually want to lose the metal in that bit. So that little lead-in dot means it starts from the piece you're going to lose and it cuts around there. So if I go and give this a start, and what I'll show you is, Okay, so if I just bring this over, you actually see these motors. So there's the y-axis motors, because remember we got two together. This is the x-axis moving, and now over here, in response to the cutting, you'll see the actual z-axis moving up and down, which effectively is moving the torch up 
away from the material when it moves and then back down again into the material when it cuts. So again, that's what the motors are doing. This is the MyPlasm controller. It's got a USB cable, as I mentioned before, back into the computer. And as you can see now, you can see the little cursor, which is the torch simulator, driving around, cutting that hole. Now it goes over to this one. And it cuts that hole. And then it just goes around and cuts all the in inner holes first, because obviously once it's cut the inner holes, the, the last piece it'll cut will be the flange. So now each little option, each little segment lights up in turn. And then what it'll do now is it'll go down to the bottom, and that's gonna cut the whole circle out. So while it's doing that, these motors are responding to that. And when it finishes, the torch will just park itself. So that's finished. And I forgot to mention over here, these parameters are the cutting speed you want it to travel at. And because we're in millimeters, it's millimeters a minute. Um, your, your torch height is set to what you tell it to be. And typically it's 1.5 mil. I was using five just to measure a few things as it went. And your piercing height and your times. Now you've seen that little demonstration. Hopefully that explained the purpose of all these components. One thing I forgot to show you was the uh, plasma interface unit. It's actually got an on-off signal which tells the, the plasma cutter to turn on and off. And you can actually probably hear that clicking. Um, so the interface unit will tell the torch to turn on and off in response to where it is in relation to that cut. Just want to mention too, on the uh, controller module, you also have provision for homing switches. So when the carriage moves, if it reaches its limit, the, the um, limit switch will actually trigger the software to make it stop moving. And the other thing is too, is important, is a, is a um, emergency stop button. Now, even on the bench test like this, if you want to run it and something happens and it goes a bit haywire, you'll need to be able to stop this in a hurry. So in real life, there'll be a stop button on the control board and there'll be a stop button out on the, um, on the plasma table itself. And in a future video, I'll do an in-depth look at the software itself and how it all works I, and I'll work out how I can record it off the screen because that was a little bit um, flickering I guess because of the frequency of the of the laptop screen so yeah look forward to that in, a, in another video all right so just a brief explanation for part two what we're going to do in part three is we're going to start and build the frame that the gantry will run on which means where the torch will live and the torch will actually be mounted on this z-axis but we've got to build the X and Y's first. So um, that's a brief overview of the electronics working. So what we'll do next is we'll start to build the frames and I'll show you the linear rails that the carriage will run on. I'll show you the ball screws we're going to use that will be attached to these um, X and Y axis motors and that'll drive, the ball screw will drive a nut that'll drive the carriage and you'll see all that once we get that assembled. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, this video for part two. Stick around for part three uh, where we build the frame. And if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up would be appreciated. If you like the video and you'd like to uh, subscribe to the channel, please do so, the subscribe button's down here. And if you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link, I think it's up here somewhere, I'll put a link to part one. And yeah, thanks again for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.